been talking about fathers and we really need to understand the role that fatherhood plays in our life. God has presented himself to us as a father and the theme of fatherhood right throughout history, right throughout parenting and wars and family and, uh, and cultures and of course in faith and the Bible. Fatherhood is one of the key elements of our upbringing, of our development. A father brings into his son or daughter some of the most important things that you and I need to develop. Let me begin with self-esteem. Self-esteem is something that any and every human being has to live with. They have to work with. They, they, they draw their energy, they draw their strength from their self-esteem. The ability to recognize, to know that you are worth you are somebody in this world. Fathers bring that to their children. It is the father's confidence in a child, a father's affirmation of a child, an assurance of the child. It's in his word, it's in his, his eyes that you first find that confidence. Self-esteem without your dad speaking words of life and meaning and direction into you, without a dad to please, without someone whose smile and whose, uh, whose joy uh, grips you, life is very difficult. We're saying that there are some key areas that are underdeveloped when a father has been absent. I'm going to give you long-term solutions. I'm not just going to leave you there if this has been your experience. I want to work with you on getting you out of that and getting you beyond. Now, one out of a hundred Guys or girls will probably say, you know what, I didn't have that, but I'm going to live. I'm going to, I'm going to make some, something out of myself and I'm going to move forward. I'm going to win one out of a hundred. But most would live for the affirmation of an absent father. And that void that is left in their soul leaves them not wanting to even do well in life. Not wanting to relate to other men other authorities. Let me tell you some of the most important areas. Correction and authority. When you have not experienced it from a loving father, then every other arena becomes correction and authority without love, without that confidence that comes from the fact that you know that this authority is being established upon you with your interests in mind. Do you understand what I mean? Every other authority is established or, or is executed on top of you or is implemented upon on top of you for their own interests. But the only one you truly trust is your dad. And when that hasn't happened, then you will suspect any and every authority as self-interest, as with the gender. You will not be able to relate to authority the way you're supposed to when dad has been absent in your life. Let me give you another area. Affection. Affection primarily comes from dad. You see, moms are there and they nurture and they hug and they kiss and they give you the nurture of the early years. But the latter years where you learn to, to associate with other people, where you learn to be comfortable with yourself, comfortable with your body, again going back to self-esteem, comfortable with your masculinity or your femininity, a lot of that comes from dad. And when dad has not given you physical affirmation, physical affection, again, my friend, no matter how much you think you can cope with it, it has affected. It has done its damage. Now, this doesn't mean you go and start beating up on your dad and start blaming your dad for everything. But I'm just, I'm trying to get to the root problem so that you understand how God wants to heal and how God wants to compensate for that. When God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love, he knows what he's talking about. But some of the damages come from there. When your dad has not been affectionate, you don't know how to be correctly affectionate with other men. You don't know how to treat women properly. Affection from that point becomes sensual. It becomes sexual. It doesn't become uh, uh, filial. It doesn't, it doesn't become healthy. And, it, and, and then you misconstrue and misinterpret any bit of affection, whether from men or from women. And it seriously affects you. Another area in your life is absolution. Absolution. That's a big word, but let me explain it in just a bit. Absolution is when you are told, it's okay, beta. It's all right. I forgive you. 
Those are words that we need to hear. We need to hear, I am forgiven. And when I do something wrong, mom, mommy always says, wait till daddy comes home. Mommy always says, dad is going to be very upset about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when dad addresses the issue and he executes punishment or uh, reprimands or correction, and then after that he says, come, let me give you a hug. And you do something wrong or you do something stupid, your dad corrects you and then he completes that process with saying, I forgive you, come. And he restores that love. If that process is not complete, if you've had a father that just looked at you with that look saying, you'll never be good enough. You'll never, or a father just walked away and you don't know what he's thinking. A father who never closed the deal. A father who left you hanging. A father who, need, who didn't give you that final closure says, I forgive you. That is absolution. Absolution is when a father executes forgiveness and tells you this will not come up again. You're free to go. That is something that leaves a lot of people wanting more correction. So you see young boys getting up to more mischief because actually what they want is that full process. You see young uh, juveniles or you see uh, teenagers uh, being more rebellious. Actually what they want is the end product, the makeup of that entire story. They want to be corrected. They desperately want to be corrected. And fathers don't do that. So therefore, and many fathers don't have the guts. They don't have the guts to correct. They don't have the, the love to correct. And God says, when a father loves his son, he corrects his son. So it's a love issue. Again, again, God wants to go the distance and complete that story for you. But let me tell you the good news. There isn't any area where you are broken or hurting or damaged because of the absence of your father. There isn't any area that God cannot heal. God can heal. God can replace that, not with another person, but by himself. He can replace that. He can heal that. He can measure up and he can go further than any father has ever gone to bring you back and restore in you what has been lost. That is the miracle of Jesus. That is what Jesus can do for you. Because Jesus says, I have come, and all that the Father, all who the Father draws to me, I will in no wise cast out. I will not lose anyone that the Father has given to me, and I will bring them back to the Father. That's what Jesus is all about. To follow Jesus is to get back to the Father. The only Father who has ever really loved you. The only Father who knows exactly what you need. And no matter how much has been robbed of you, or stolen from you, or kept from you, God can reimburse.